We're live there. And we're live there. Yeah. And we're live there. And we're live there. We are on two social medias at the same time. <laughs> we are on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Instagram and Facebook. Facebook and Instagram. Right. <laughs> Instagram like and hat. Facebook. <clears throat> yeah? Is it your party hat? Yeah. Party honey man. Party honey dude. Yeah. All right. Okay, this was your idea, so this is on the private thing, so you can. Oh, it's it. private. Yeah, this is private. I could be not so but so. Well, this isn't private, else? but that is okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we usually say a lot about sex, and then we usually say have a conversation. And so, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go the other way around and actually tell you to have the conversation, how to have the conversation, rather than just talk about it, because sometimes yeah, go talk about it. Yeah. Okay, and a lot of times people are like. I have no idea how to even approach this subject. Right. And Bring some, it up. Yeah, and sometimes things are really deep and you kind of need some Guide. guidelines or a path to go down to go, oh, like okay, guidelines. this is how I have better sex. This is how to have better, sex. Have better sex. I have better sex. So than me? Yeah, then you, yeah. Better, way better sex than you. <laughs> sometimes it's with you. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> the look. <laughs> sometimes no, but my dad. I'm joking. All right, so um, five. There, I could do five ways to have better sex. And um, it's not, this isn't a how to touch your spouse ways to have better sex. This There's is, a lot of ways to have better sex. Right. But we're going to talk about this one because I really think it's important. You think it's important. Yeah. And I've noticed you have been doing it a lot lately. Just this. Having better sex. Yeah, well. Are you having better sex? <laughs> just, um, just in general. Yeah. Talking about, talking about it. So talking about it. Yeah. So all right. Yeah. So I'm gonna have a cheat sheet over here that you can't see, so I can stay on course. On point. Yes. On we point. need to keep him on keep point. Him straight on the narrow. Because mm. you know his yeah. tangents will be like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, right. you said brain. You just said it. The brain. One. Right. So step one. The biggest sex organ is. Your brain. Your mind. Is that just for women? Nope. No. Is it for men? Is it for dogs? Who knows? I'm not a dog. Um, no, it's instinctual. <laughs> we are self-aware. Uh, never mind. We That's know that we have a brain. Okay, we so know that we have a brain. <laughs> some of us do. Most people. Do. Some of us try to keep a hat on it. All right. So since the brain is your biggest sex organ, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times, as a guy's point of view, what I'm trying to do to woo my wife or get her in the mood to have better sex, I have to get into her brain a little bit not like um, you know serial killer yeah like. yeah really dexter okay so <clears throat> since the biggest sex origin is your brain on both sides you have to use it uh, <laughs> use your brain use your brain <laughs> So you like help? No, no, no. Okay, so Are this is going off? no. You're gonna the you're rails. gonna step in because I wrote this on the blog and, um, and I wrote his it. brain was just no, just but I wrote it from my point of view, and so I want you to step in and and say your point of view. So this is what I normally do if I want to have a nice sexual experience with this one. Um, <laughs> I hope it's not with anyone else. Is I, I start thinking, hey, her, you know. I like her whole body, but the very first organ I have to initiate is her brain. Yes. So I start asking questions like, how are you doing? What's going on in your head? Um, how do you feel? And I do that pretty early in the morning. I also do it at lunchtime and I also do it at dinner. And the things that I'm looking for, you're smiling, and the things that I'm looking for are, you know, I have I have laundry to do, that I'm homeschooling the kids and I need help with that, the floor is a mess, uh, I'm having issues with someone at church, can you, you know, and so at that point, I'm taking all of those clues and I'm going, okay, I could do the laundry, I can put the kids to bed, I could do all of these things to remove that one thing out of her head. And I think that's, yeah, and that's that's women in general. We, we tend to be like, okay, I gotta do everything and the kids and blah, 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 blah. Like sex is the very last thing on that list. And, and I'm just trying to move it up the list yeah. by removing things from above it. And this goes for, for women and men too, depending on who's the more high desire or who's really trying to woo the other one. You know, maybe he's got a really stressful time at work and I'm really talking to him. How was your day? You know, greet him at the door with a blow job. Does it with hey, no we children got there position? Yet. But I mean, don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, don't. Make sure the kids uh, aren't around if you do that. <laughs> seriously, here, fix your thing. Oh. So, uh, you know, things like, it, it doesn't have to come to completion. It's just be like, 
I am now focused all on you. What can I do for you, babe? Yeah. And it could and be a simple it be touch. Sexual, and it may not. And whatever the love language is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I have on the blog is um, if, if it's an issue like, for example, your wife is struggling with another person or she's just having an issue, um, I'm going to speak directly to men. You are there to listen and encourage and not solve the problem. Not necessarily you are just the there to listen yes. and mourn or agree with join. or whatever. Just join, join her like, in the experience that, that she is them. experiencing. Yes. And so again, if usually, and I'm general, generalizing here, sex is at the bottom of the woman's to-do list. What I'm doing is I'm trying to remove as many things up to bring sex to the top of the to-do list. So when it's time for sexy time, then there isn't anything there to really to do that with what the phone is just ringing. pick it up and hang it up okay <clears throat> going going deeper <laughs> going deeper step two have a conversation about body i think this is important um we don't want this to go on forever and ever so we're gonna, be we're gonna quick, go really quick this is a really important one and this is something that honestly 20 years and we've just had this conversation. I mean, we've had other conversations, but something very similar. How did you feel it went growing up about your body? Like, what was the stigma? Like, we have so many stigmas in our head about a certain sex act, um, a position, maybe um, a, a part of your body, different things. That we have a stigma that what you were, how we were raised. Yep. Who and raised so you? It, how they raised you? It will affect your right. your uh, sexuality in your marriage. Talk about that. Talk about it openly, because I learned something like, wow, that blew my mind. I had no idea <laughs> that you thought it. No, that you, <laughs> that you thought that way about that certain thing. Right. Because I have a different perspective. And I right. think if you share those perspectives, you're getting a different um, viewpoint of, of where your spouse is coming with sex. I think that is huge. Yeah. How, the, how you view your body, how you, you take about, into the bedroom. Yeah. And if your partner doesn't know how you view body, your own body, mm -hmm. then they're, they're going to hit a roadblock every single time. Yeah. And so, and it, it can come, come down to if you were raised and oral sex was always a sin or always talked poorly about, then if your husband or if your wife wants to have oral sex, then there's always going to be some trepidation shame, or some fear and shame and afterwards yeah. and all of that. So how your spouse views their own body it's important for you to know and then and then to follow yeah. up to follow up on that um if it's something that you a want to work through or is it something that you need to accept yeah and that's so, the third step is what are you going to do with this newfound information right yeah i yeah. she views her body differently than i view my body yeah and so and neither one of it's right or wrong right but understanding it and knowing it goes oh 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 huh. that makes a whole lot of sense or Okay, am I going to forget about that? Does that change how we act in the bedroom? Mm -hmm. Will that change our sex life? Will that deepen it? This is all about really getting to know each other in a different way, in a deeper way, in a more intimate way. Right, so, and that leads to step number four, uh, the experience, experimentation. So yeah. now that you know how your wife or husband views their body, at that point when you want to bring something new into the bedroom, you can come at Come at it through the point some of thing, not of, some yeah, something, <laughs> yeah, of how they of how they view their body. And so, in other words, hey, I want to try this new sex act, or what do you think about doing this? And then you can approach approach it that way with the understanding that they view their body differently. Because if you view your body like I view my body, and you can read the blog, it's vastly different than I would say ninety percent of the people out there because I'm messed up. But with no, with some people, no, it's not. vastly different than how she views her body. And that's on the blog as well. But the, so, it's a good viewpoint for me yeah. because it, it gets me out of my shell a little bit more going, oh, that's not a wrong viewpoint. It's not a sinful or illegal viewpoint. Yeah. It's his viewpoint. It's just and different. If, if it's different. And if I take that into consideration, then now I can say, what do you want to, do you want to try this? Because mm -hmm. he's, he's a, I will try everything three times. Maybe it was a weird time. Maybe I didn't really like it. I might like it the next time. <laughs> the third time like I'll be perverse. like, no, the third time I'll be like, I really don't like yeah, it. Yeah. Or, yes, I do like that. Yeah. So, the, yeah. The, or I like that every other week on a Tuesday. Um, a random Tuesday. Step five. Um, ask questions. Yeah. In the middle of sex, before yeah. sex, after sex, ask a bunch of questions. And he does a really good job. I want to say this. Because Ooh. you do a really good job with this. You do say, do you want to stop? Oh. Are you okay? Because that's a huge thing. If you give your partner the 
the option of stopping in the middle, that might be difficult, but it shows the other person, I respect you so much, I love you so much, and I care about you so much. It doesn't matter what my feelings and emotions and the sexuality is happening right now, I mm -hmm. want to make sure that you're okay. You know, and sometimes coming back to it in about an hour, you know, things, if things aren't working or brains work, whatever, yeah. we've stopped and we've come back to it in an hour or maybe the next morning or something and, and finished it and felt in a better We can get into mind. denial play later, but. <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here. You can do that. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about feelings and emotions and, yeah. you know, I, I'll, fine. Oh, we'll have sex. We haven't had sex in a couple of days. Let's have sex. And then in the middle of it, I'm like. I am not here. Especially I'm if I'm not here. If I'm looking at her and I'm like, wow, this looks like she's just marking something off the list. Yeah. Then I'll be like, do you, do you want to stop? And it's, it sucks for me to stop, but for she the is. the person that's really into it. She is a person and yeah. she is not my toy. So asking her if she wants to stop and then I could, we could pick it up later. Or she could just say, I just want to be with you. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So it, it gives you options to ask to, to find you, out what the answer, but ask the question. To understand what their person is feeling in the middle of it. Too. Yeah, and I always tell my kids, you're not gonna get upset or fired from a job for asking questions. You're not gonna be told to get off your spouse if you're asking questions in the middle of sex, <laughs> you know? And you can ask other questions like, how does this feel? Am I doing this right? And you can get into the light version of sexy talk by, oh, more. Asking a a bunch of, by asking a bunch of questions mm -hmm. during sex. Obviously, it's not 21 questions in the middle <laughs> like, of intercourse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spy with my little eye. Well, that could be fun. <laughs> but those are, those are, time. Yeah, those are five simple ways to have better sex. And if you notice, oh, none, of, none of it is about touch her here, touch him there, do okay. this thing. It, the it is about... Having communication, understanding how your spouse views body, experimenting, using safe words, and asking a bunch of questions. All of this is communication that we communication, communication that we uh, normally talk about. So yeah. when we talk about, hey, just talk about your safe word. Now I wanted to give you some tools about how to actually have a conversation of, do we need a safe word if we're experimenting? Yeah, I think we do. So what's the safe word? And let's go ahead and experiment. How does this feel? Ask a bunch of questions. Yep, so that is your homework. Talk about each other's viewpoint on their body. How do they view their body? Do they hate it? Do they love it? Do they want to experiment with it? Is it free reign or what other stigmas come in? I huh. that's that right is there. Is it something that they want to work through the, the stigma? You yeah. know what I mean? If it's mm -hmm. for example, if it's oral sex mm -hmm. has always been bad, mm -hmm. is that something that you both want to work through? Or even we've talked about yeah. abuse on yeah. the, the blog. Abuse as well. Okay. That if your spouse different. was abused, they view their body vastly different and Possibly. you need to know how to do that. Yeah. Sub point not, not abuse. Sub <laughs> point five. Yeah, don't abuse it. Sub point five. The brain during sex, doing something random will flip the brain into thinking more about sex, especially if if your brain is wandering thinking about the kids, are they gonna knock yeah. on the door and all of that. So mix it up, surprise your spouse. I talk about random BJs and I talk about random acts of service. Husbands randomly buy your wife flour or Not find their love. They're in trouble. Yeah. Just do it. Find their love language and take them out to lunch. Do that random stuff so that it tricks their brain into oh Ooh. you know this is a pleasure center. It's the biggest one, so you start should start pleasing it. So having the conversation about body, start pleasing it. messing around with their brain a little bit, just a little, will encourage you to have better sex. Yep. All right. Have a marriage it's everywhere. Have a marriage. Go to haveamarriage.com and you can see this blog post on five steps to have a better bet sex. Um, we're doing this live on Instagram at the same time. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, Dropbox view. Uh, da datebox. Datebox. Not Dropbox. I mean, uh, Datebox.com. Get datebox.com. Date date have a marriage 50, the for, number 50. For 50% 50 off your first datebox. And it's fun. And do that. Because, you know, if you do them, then you can talk about body. I think a lot of fun questions. Why actually. you're shooting your spouse with a mushroom, marshmallow gun. Marshmallow gun. <laughs> yeah, with a mushroom gun. Dropbox and mushrooms. Okay, yeah. we'll Dro see you guys next Monday.